Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm your host Bill. This is my third video. I still haven't named my channel at the time of filming this. I did a bunch of videos back to back before I even created my channel. So today I'm going to talk about PCI Express. And the first thing I want to talk about are CPUs. So in my opinion, if you're looking at getting a uh, RTX series 3070 or better graphics card or managed to acquire one, you really want to be looking at PCI Express Gen 3 16x slot, at least one. Usually on most motherboards, it's this topmost long slot. And the other part of that is, at least for Intel, I'm sorry I'm not as familiar with AMD's. I'm not an Intel fanboy, but all of my desktops have been Intel. And like I said in one of my other videos, the reason I went Intel for this one was just for driver compatibility, since I did not want to reinstall Windows. But at least for Intel with a four core, I would say four gigahertz or better, four core CPU with a 3070 at a 2K resolution or better, you should be just fine. And the reason I say PCI Express Gen 3 is because the RTX 3070 is starting to get close to the edge of the limit for the bandwidth of PCI Express Gen 3 16X. Getting close. You might notice some um, bottlenecking with the interface with a Gen 2 16X which would be the same as a Gen 3 8X. So this is my new motherboard, the ROG Strix Z590e Gaming, and I have an 11th gen CPU. If you go 10th gen with this motherboard, this M.2 is disabled. This slot becomes uh, 16X Gen 3, this M.2 is 4x gen 3 and these two are also 4x gen 3. With the 11th gen like I have you can have a m.2 at gen 4, a 16x gen 4, another gen 4 m.2 and two more gen 3.2s and a, a PCI uh, gen 3 down at the bottom. So let's go to the configuration. This is from the manual. I couldn't find my paper one. I was looking for it, but I could not locate it. But you have the M.2, M.2, and two more M.2s. PCI Express 1, 2, and 3. So here's their configuration. The first one is 16x. If you populate the first and second, it goes to 8x and ax and the bottom one is a 4x for triple and the configuration if you populate just the first one and you have two m.2s so that would be this and this they'd operate in 4x mode and the pci would run in 8x mode now, 8x Gen 4 is the same as 16x Gen 3. And in one of my other videos, I showed the PCI interface using the 6700K and the 11700K and sort of comparing it and the benchmarks. So for the RTX 3070, there isn't a meaningful difference in performance. But if you're going higher than that, I think i feel like there's going to you may see some bottlenecking up here if you're using it at 8x so like the 3080 or 3090. Um, so next i want to talk about ports and expansion so i chose this motherboard because i really liked its layout for number of fan headers so these two for cpu fan then over here uh, you can for the back fan 
as well as an AIO pump. There's another header for another pump, so this is great for water cooling. And two more fans. I actually find it a little lacking on fans, but it's okay because the case comes with a fan splitter uh, PCB. And it has plenty of storage. It has six uh, SATA slots and the four M.2s that we talked about. And for me, that was very important. I wanted to make sure I could move this from my SATA-based SSDs to uh, M.2 at some point in the future. And this is spelling out how different processors split out the different M.2 configurations. Jumping to the product page, you know, this is what the motherboard looks like without anything attached to it. And now well, there's the SATA drives. So in my opinion, if you're looking at RTX 3070 or better or other high-end GPUs or trying to select something for future expandability, I would suggest getting at least PCI Express Gen 3 with one 16x slot that you can dedicate to that. The ways you may see performance hits later on down the line. And you want at least a four gigahertz processor. And so that kind of limits to Intel uh, 14 nanometer. So that's starting at the 6000 series. And this comes from testing out this GPU. When I was running a 1070, my GTX 1070, before I waited in the long line to upgrade, there would be no performance difference at all going to the CPU 11th gen versus the 6th generation. Um, that's really all I have to say about PCI interface and kind of looking at that and how to select a motherboard. Oh, actually, I did want to talk about one other thing. I'm sorry. I'm new to this, and I'm doing this unscripted. It's the port selection. So because this is Intel, it has an IGP hooked up to it, so I have display port and HDMI as a backup in case the GPU goes out for diagnostic purposes. And I chose this because of the number of USB ports and the number that are uh, 10 gig and and 20 gig ports as well as regular uh, vanilla USB Gen 3 and it has two and a half gig Ethernet and so selecting a motherboard kind of depends on what your requirements are and what you feel you need. So how much expandability, what kind of ports. This motherboard was about $300, which is expensive compared to my old one, which was the Asus Maximus Hero V III. Sorry, I don't remember my Greek numbers offhand, unscripted. But that one uh, had much fewer ports and well, it's older, so it only had one 10 gig port, and it was a hundred and fifty dollars, and that was high end back in 2015, 16. Well, now 2021 to get medium high end, three hundred dollars. So, uh, if you're running the highest end CPUs, you will want to make sure it has good power phasing. Uh, I can't really talk about that. I just know 14 plus 2 power states and want to make sure it has plenty of cooling for the VRM and that sort of thing so that uh, as you heat up the CPU, it can cool down the capacitors and whatnot so that it can maintain performance. So that's really the thought process behind selecting motherboards. Does it have the ports? 
that you want? Does it have the expandability that you want? I like the fact I have built-in Wi-Fi. Mine that is using up uh, a PCI lane or sharing it with something. So you're losing a little bit there. If you don't need Wi-Fi, don't get it. You can save a little bit of money there. But uh, selecting the motherboard depends on what sort of requirements you have for connecting devices to it and that sort of thing. Now that's really all I have to say. I hope that this uh, little talk was helpful, useful for the average home user. Uh, have a great day.